Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Doing Life with Ken. Ken and, and Tabitha. We are pumped to have everybody here. Love you, sweetheart. i so excited okay. to be able to do this podcast with you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm glad that we didn't give up on our marriage. There was a time yeah. where we wanted to give up, at least I did, and throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. It would have been the worst decision that I've ever made. And to see how God can take our mess and now create a message yeah. speaks to the awesomeness of God yeah. and the reason that we want people to fight for the relationship mm -hmm. because it is truly worth the fight. Um, anything you want to share to kind of get us started here? <laughs> um, no, you surprised me with that opening, but okay. I'm glad that we didn't give up. Well, you need well. to stay on your toes because I'm full, I'm full of surprises. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyhow, Note taken. Um, today's episode is entitled Kids and Technology, Kids uh -huh. and Technology. And so mm -hmm. we want to talk about um, parenting today, mm -hmm. and we really want to share some things that we do. Now, this is not one that I feel um, super advanced in. Uh -huh, I don't uh -huh. see, feel like I got it all figured out, but I do think that we've made some decisions to protect our kids from all of the technology. So we want to talk about video games and social media. We want to talk about television. We want to talk about YouTube. We want to talk about technology, all those things, because there's just so many kids that are almost addicted to technology, yeah. and it's causing a problem. So I don't know. What you think? Um, yeah, I think they're, I mean, and especially by the time that the kid or the teenager becomes 18, 19, 20, 21, they've already kind of been um, introduced to depression, anxiety, shame, guilt. They've gotten into all of these areas that used to be like, you know, these were adult issues. Yeah. But I was doing a little bit of research uh -huh. um, about, you know, even teenagers. Uh -huh. And it was saying like, you know, cer a certain percent of teenagers last year experienced depression uh -huh. and it's like a 20 percent increase from the year before like there are and the so year before many that was a 20 percent yeah. increase before the year before that yeah. and so like the mm. bottom line is now more than ever before uh -huh. teenagers uh -huh. and kids are being diagnosed with depression uh -huh. anxiety suicide suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. um and so it's just like there's all these statistics out there that we all hear about a lot uh -huh. but if you set these statistics aside uh -huh. Common sense will tell us as parents <laughs> that technology uh -huh. is really not the best thing for our children. Right. Um, it's great to get in touch with them that they have phones and things. And just 100 like technology agree. always has great benefits. Yes. That's really not the part we're going to play today. The yeah. part we're going to play today is what in the world do we do with it? Yes. Like our kids, they go to school and they have to have a laptop. Mm -hmm. That's They don't have books, they have laptops. Yep. And then they have to have an iPad, you know what yep. I'm saying? So it's not like we can run away from this. Right. It's not like we can say, well, no, I'm a believer. I don't want technology. That's not working. Right. So we're gonna have it. Now the question is how do we manage what we have? Right. And how do we steward it in a way that's going to be healthy mm -hmm. in our relationship for God and our callings and all that kind of stuff. And it just feels like, I mean, honestly, it just feels like kids are being exposed to too much, too fast. Too much, too fast. And they can't handle it. Um, mm. and, and I think if it, even like, it, you, so you have technology, but what do we do on technology? We watch movies, we're listening to music. And so I think even the movies that our children are watching, mm -hmm. it's way too much, way too fast. The music, way too much, way too fast. Surprised the amount of sexual that. content, uh -huh. don't even try uh -huh. it. Don't even we, try we, we it, okay? The amount of sexual content uh -huh. in a children's movie, yeah. you know, like PG thirteen or like That's a PG, PG. or PG children. a PG movie, a G movie, a G movie. <laughs> um, um, the amount of um, adult humor, uh -huh. um, the amount of like the fearfulness, mm -hmm. adult issues, mm -hmm. whether it be husband and wife issues, mm -hmm. whether it be like. Um, serious like people dying people getting shot violence uh -huh. that are in the movies and music that our <laughs> kids listen to through technology um was it music it's a lot people listen to movies music well. people listen to uh -huh. and and movies that people watch right. that we watch well okay so we've been married for 23 years mm -hmm. and we have three kids one is 17 uh-huh one is 13 Mm -hmm. um, about to be 14 and one is 12. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of in the thick of it right now. Yeah. We're kind of right in the middle of it to where all of our kids, like one is about to be an adult yeah. next month. And then the others, like we have <laughs> to be aware crazy? of what's going on. Like, yeah, we have a young adult in our house and now we're going to have two teenagers. And, um, um, one of our kids, the youngest is super into everything technology. technology. I mean, 
He's a straight like, techie and can just do anything with technology. Apple, Samsung, yeah. um, the the what's the car? <laughs> I'm blanking out. <laughs> Tesla. The Tesla. Oh, how can I forget? I hear Tesla like I heard the word Tesla <laughs> like 50 times today on the way because we were <laughs> talking about school. getting a new car <laughs> and he's like, "But mommy, you should really get the Tesla." I mean, he knows the gas he, he knows he the amount of down. money you will save uh -huh. per year uh -huh. on gas uh -huh. if you get a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude. Yeah, yeah, this guy's. So we, we really are having to do everything we can to kind of protect him and to not suffocate his gifting, but to make sure that it's done in a yeah. very healthy way because he's all things mm. YouTube, technology, video games, et cetera, et cetera. And I guess this started a while for us. Yeah. Um, can you talk about maybe where we came from, the video games that started? And then we'll talk about, maybe I like to talk about today, some parameters that we have for our kids. Yeah, definitely. And some things that did work, some things that didn't work, and just throw out some things for our audience of things that they might not even know. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we have this new cell phone thing that oh, yeah. we didn't find out about yep. until about three weeks ago that I was sitting down with another pastor. And he was like, yeah, I don't give my kids actual cell phones. They get, what is it called? I think you're talking about the Gab phone. Uh -huh. Yeah, is the, that what the our kids Gab have? The phone? phone. No, we've we've we we had that phone, but I changed it um, to something else. I'm just talking about the phones they yeah, have right the now. The phones they have right now <laughs> is called the Bark phone. That's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so uh -huh. it's the Bark, and it is amazing. I absolutely love it. Okay, we'll share a little bit more uh -huh. about what because you can turn on and off stuff. They yes, can't connect the Wi-Fi. Yes, the you joy. see everything that they're doing, and we had no idea mm -hmm. until a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Mm -hmm. um, what was my first question? Okay, we were talking about some of the things that, how we first started, um, I don't know, stumbling upon this whole technology thing uh -huh. and how we introduced it to our kids uh -huh. and some of the problems that we got into. Mm -hmm. And so I found that, you know, when our kids were younger, um, they wanted to play video games. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, some of the, a lot of the video games, like Fortnite, mm -hmm. um, they, it, they were just too violent. I didn't feel like that for was appropriate for, for my kids, right? right. Um, under a certain age, like uh, like seven, eight, nine, I, I personally. Right. And I know a lot of friends that yeah. they're... Now, here's the thing. We're going to uh -huh. throw out some things that we know there are parents that are letting their kids do these right. things. We're going to tell you what we do. What we do. Why we do it. Yeah. And then see what you need to do. Yeah. And the good news about this kind of podcast is that there's people who want to have kids, but they don't have kids yet. And they need to set the temperature of their house Ooh, yeah. before it even comes. Yes. And that's the problem. People don't have conversations. And so for us... Um, well, we set the temperature, mm -hmm. you know, like before, like when our kids were really young, I'm talking one, two, three. Uh -huh. So we didn't even allow like in certain things on TV, uh -huh. period, if our kids were going to be around to absorb it. So like even in October, all of the horror movies come out and you can't watch the basketball game or, or the football game without these horror mo these commercials coming on. Mm -hmm. We will turn the commercial off. Right. We will put it on silence. We will you know, anything right. like just not to allow these things to get into the heart, mm -hmm. um, the mind, the soul of mm -hmm. our kids. Mm -hmm. So we set that kind of temperature in mm -hmm. our house early on. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, the same was with music mm -hmm. and with like certain cartoons. So when our kids were younger, <laughs> listen, mm -hmm. I would let our, you know, like they two, three years old, there's this cartoon called Caillou mm -hmm. um, that would come on um, like PBS or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was so, such a cute little boy, Caillou. Mm -hmm. And it had this cute little intro song, but Caillou was a brat, okay? Caillou would throw temper tantrums. He would break things and talk back to his parents. And it was kind of like at the end, it was supposed to like wrap it all up. Uh-uh, our child, okay? She would watch Caillou and do what he did. And I didn't, I didn't catch on until finally I realized, oh snap, Caillou is influencing this child. She thinks she can act like Caillou. I cut Caillou off and for the rest of our kids, we don't watch Caillou. Well, that's what I was wanting to ask you. Um, so what in the history with our kids, mm -hmm. have you seen technology have a Absolutely. negative effect in when? Can you Absolutely. Give me a few um, so Caillou. Well, like yeah, Caillou uh -huh. definitely. Another one was SpongeBob. Okay. You know when they were like maybe eight, nine. Like everybody went. SpongeBob is harmless. He's not hurting anyone. Uh -huh. 
but he made my kids act obnoxious uh -huh. and do obnoxious, rude things. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm like, no, you're not doing that. So you, we cut him so off. So we cut off SpongeBob. There's other Bob. things that you can do. Right. But, you know, for a kid, like, you can't for go to school kid. acting like SpongeBob. Yeah. You get kicked out of the class. <laughs> so, no, we don't watch SpongeBob, okay? Yeah. okay. So, and those are like little age appropriate things, uh -huh. right? Um, technology, when they were younger, they wanted to to play uh, Roblox. Mm -hmm. And there was this another one like Animal Kingdom or something. Mm -hmm. And they're great games. Mm -hmm. But, um, and the reason why I let them play them is because it introduced them to technology. They loved it. They could get on and be on playing with their other friends, right? And so it was a way to be social. Mm -hmm. And they they were so cute. They know how to do everything. They had their little head headphones. And I had it all protected and safeguarded. But what I found out was they became like literally addicted to it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking eight, nine year olds, right? Mm -hmm. Addicted to Roblox. When you say addicted, what do you mean? What would they do? I'm talking about they they were aggressive. Uh -huh. They started fighting with each other. As long they did everything to get back to the game. Uh -huh. So I would say, go clean your room. Mm -hmm. They would go to the room, throw everything under the bed, like you know, just hide everything and do a halfway job mm -hmm. so that they can get back to playing the game. Is fat? Okay, I'm done. I and this is when I knew it was a serious problem. Mm -hmm. I told them, and it was a couple days in a row. I mm -hmm. said, come and eat dinner. Mm -hmm. And one day I ordered their favorite food by Uber Eats, mm -hmm. and I knew they were going to come to the dinner table mm -hmm. and devour it. They took like a bite, left it on the table, and went back to Roblox. I said, oh, no. Mm -hmm. You guys, you're not eating. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do your homework. You're fighting each other and mm -hmm. being really aggressive, and you're doing everything you can just to get back to this game. Mm -hmm. We had to stop it. So what, what I see in that is more of a um, you're looking at the fruit and you know mm -hmm. how you want your kids to behave. Mm -hmm. And if they are not behaving a certain way as a parent, you are looking and saying, okay, what could be influencing my kids? Because this is not their normal self. And then you're pulling back on those things, even though they demand it or throw a fit for it, oh, maybe yeah. even cry about it, maybe all their friends is doing it. Absolutely. That doesn't matter in parenting at all. You're mm -hmm. the one who has a responsibility to train them up in mm -hmm. the way they should go. And I would do my mm -hmm. best. At first, I cut it down like, okay, you can only do this an hour a day, but that didn't work. Mm -hmm. But And what I found out was when I removed it, I would replace other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go to the park. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're going to go ride your bike. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do other activities to replace this but the aggression went away the aggression. they started doing their homework without <laughs> complaining now, again they cleaned their room the way they were supposed to I think aggression is an interesting word mm -hmm. when we're talking about kids and technology because what I've seen is that um, one of our kids if they are always like um, our, 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 our middle kid we gave a phone when she turned like 11 years old mm -hmm. because we wanted to keep in touch with her right but the phone became this thing that she was always on always on oh almost what you would come in a room and she would block you out block out life and she would be playing little games little innocent games but you just get addicted to playing those games and I felt like she would get um, angry mm -hmm. at other people frustrated all the time um, now she's our turned up kid, but I'm talking about even turned up more than the normal turned up. Like just like there was this attitude that came along and was it the phone or was it something else with her? It, no, it was the phone. Uh -huh. It was almost like, um, because she had a way through certain apps to communicate with her friends Okay, and it was just like, she wanted to be in virtual, re virtual reality with her friends uh -huh. who aren't inside of the house. Uh -huh then she would rather do that than be in mm -hmm. reality with real people, having mm -hmm. real conversations, mm -hmm. enjoying games and family nights. She but, just always wanted to be on that phone. But it, it, it affected her attitude mm -hmm. in a way in our house where it was obvious. And, and we she took, knew it. And we took away the phone, and then we got our daughter back. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, she was nice again after we took away the phone. And so I don't know. I've kind of drawn a beeline between aggressiveness and technology in a certain age and kind of kid. Mm -hmm. I know with our youngest son, um, he kind of really got into, what is that video game that he likes to play with his friends? Is it Fortnite now? I What's think it's it's Fortnite. Yeah, it's Fortnite. Okay, he's playing this video game, and it's like, all the time, I'm going to play the video game. In the car, I'm going to play the video game. It's almost like I can now block out everything, everyone, not clean my room, not do my homework. i got to get back on this game. And his attitude was just... There was just a level of, you, you could tell it wasn't right, and we take away the game, even though you don't want to, you right. have to, and then all of a sudden you get your kid back. Yeah. Um, I don't know, do you draw the same 
you know, parallel. Absolutely. It's just, you, you can see the results though. I can see if I remove the game, uh -huh. you know, when they start the game uh -huh. stuff, little by little stuff goes crazy. Uh -huh. A few weeks into it, I'm like, okay. But when I remove it uh -huh. and you see the correct behavior, the behavior be corrected, <laughs> it's like, yeah. We took a boy, this boy's game, man, I'm telling you, he broke down. I'm not going to tell you how much because because I'm not going to do Don't it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't good. It was not good, people. But, uh, oh, you my know, God. So, so each child is different. Uh -huh. Our oldest child, we could trust her pretty much. We could trust her a whole lot with the phone. Uh -huh. You know, like she doesn't really even care about it that much. Uh -huh. And um, even with social media. Right. So she, is, she just now um, was allowed to have a social media account, like Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, whatever she wanted. Um going into her senior year of high school mm -hmm. because the pressure, the comparison, mm -hmm. the mental, um, I guess, you know, pressure that you can experience from social media, the bullying that happens. Well, there was actually a documentary that was released on Netflix that kind of exposed what I've already mm -hmm. believed about the dangers of social media. And the study says that young people's brains aren't built to where they can handle that kind of comparison mm. until they're 18 years old. And so that kind of leads me into, I kind of want to share with people some things that we've done yeah. and you can kind of take it or leave it, but this is what, these are decisions that we've made mm -hmm. to protect our kids. Yeah. And sometimes they can't stand these decisions, but our job is to protect them. Number mm. one, um, we don't, we don't allow our kids to have TVs in their room. Yep. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I can't. I mm -hmm. cannot um, guard what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I mean, you can have programs and things like that. I just found that it's better not to, when you go to sleep, turn off all the sleep, you know, it, <laughs> health wise, mm -hmm. let it be dark, mm -hmm. go to sleep. It's healthy. I don't want my kids staying up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning watching TV and mm -hmm. the TV putting them to sleep every night. Mm -hmm. I am grooming them and preparing them to be successful adults. Right. And you, you know, you just don't want, I, I don't want my kids doing that. And so what we did is no TV in your bedroom, mm -hmm. but there's TV. We have a, a, two TVs, two other TVs that they can go and watch. Mm -hmm. And you, everybody knows what you're watching. It's mm -hmm. no big deal. So it's just, we've never had a problem. Yeah. With so it. what you're watching is kind of out in the open. Yep. That's one of the perspectives there. And, um, but we have a TV in our bedroom. We do. Um, what do we do with that double standard? It's just like, this is what mommy and daddy does. Because, oh, yeah. And you don't, you don't get to do that. I mean, our kids don't even ask for TV because they've never had one. Uh -huh. I'm talking about 17 years, 13 years, mm -hmm. 12 years. They never, ever mm -hmm. had a TV in their bedroom. And I just felt like that was safe for us. Yep. I feel like it probably kept them away from late night commercials, shows, things oh, that we had yeah. no guard on. What you watch is out in the open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because there's there are things like Disney. Uh -huh. you, you can't be like, oh, my kid's just watching Disney. Do you know what's on Disney? Disney got an agenda. Yeah. Disney got an um, agenda. And now. so there's 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 all kinds of things. Nickelodeon, there's all kinds of stuff out there. And I just think it's safe. All right. Here's another one. We do not allow our kids to watch TV in the week. Right. So Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. whenever there's a school night, we have no TV. Yep. Can you talk about why we do that? It and has how it works? been so rewarding for uh -huh. us as a family. I think there's so many things, uh, good things that we get out of it. Uh -huh. It works because it gives our kids, um, it's teaching them to discipline themselves. Mm -hmm. You cannot come home every day and because they don't watch video games, like uh, play video games. You do nothing. No TV, no technology <laughs> so like that they do on the evening? weekdays. <laughs> well, that's great. It teaches you like you don't come home every day and, uh -huh. you know, just like lay on the couch and watch TV. You do your homework. You do your chores. You go, you, you exercise. Like last night, our kids, they go on, um, one of them didn't have um, sports practice. So he just went <laughs> jogging on his own. Like, he? Yeah. You he, said he? He Whoa. took a jog. He, on, he put on his earbuds and that, went for a listen, jog. Listen, and that kid would never do that if Come TV on. wasn't on. Exactly. Like when Saturday and he can watch TV, he might watch it 12 hours straight. Right. Because, but it's also like dessert. You don't have it all week. You can have it on exactly. the weekend. Exactly. And so as adults, mm -hmm. we have we have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're teaching them as, you know, it, as child, as children to be disciplined. So anyway, it works out great for us. And then when Friday, so Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. they're exercising, they're getting their homework done, they're cleaning their rooms, they're doing everything they need to do. But Friday, mm -hmm. oh, it's on. Mm -hmm. We go to the store, they're eating, um, they usually buy like um, things like 
uh, little candies and candy bars and stuff to snack on at night because Friday night's date night. Mm -hmm. um, they're going home. They're watching TV. They're playing their video games. Mm -hmm. They're eating candy. Mm -hmm. They're getting pizza. It's just like it's the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a reward for their diligence throughout the week. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're doing they're making the most of it. You know, that 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 move there almost sounds so counterculture that it sounds weird. Mm -hmm. But honestly, we've raised our kids to where the older two don't even care nothing about TV. Mm -mm. They don't really care about yeah. TV at all. Now, the oldest one's into movies and loves to watch Disney stuff, but they don't really care about TV that much mm -hmm. just because that hasn't been um, their, yeah. their, their major well, thing. Well, it's giving them other things to be happy. So they play sports. Uh, they run track. They play soccer. Kenny goes to Ninja. Mm -hmm. So there's other, it's teaching, there's other things to do besides play video games. Mm -hmm. Kenny makes music. Mm -hmm. He makes his own songs. Mm -hmm. He gets on YouTube and does um, little clips and things like that. So they're doing other things, uh, which I think is wonderful. Well, I mean, you have to steward that time. Most kids get home at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so then you got 3 to 8 or 9. That's six hours every single day. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to watch six hours of TV? Or so our kids might go to a, a, a track practice or something, might get home at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, that's still four hours. So our whole thing is like, let's try to do the best we can to put first things first in that time that we have. Here's another thing that we do. All technology is downstairs and on the counter by 7 p.m. every night. Yep. Now, that's the rule. I would say that it is followed. How much of the time you think that's followed? Um, it depends on each child. Uh -huh. Now, the oldest one, she's been breaking it like 60% of the time. Really? I'm telling mm. you. It's it's new, but I have not been seeing her phone, uh -huh. you know, down there. Mm -hmm. So she's just kind of gotten the other into two, other uh, habits. They, they got a new phone, this mm -hmm. bark that we're talking about, and I'm seeing their phone. Oh, yeah. But, but the rule is this. Um, whatever technology you have, iPad and phone, it is on the kitchen counter by yep. 7 p.m. Um, why do we do that? Uh, hmm. Because, again, I, I don't want them getting into the habit of every night before you go to bed, you're scrolling on your phone and you're playing games and you're doing all of this stuff. I want them to be able to, I'm teaching them, uh -huh. let's prepare hmm. for the next day. Is your yeah. homework done? Are your clothes set out? Did you take a bath? Did you brush your teeth? And the answer to most of that is no. Until right. they reach a certain age, mm -hmm. but it's our job to groom them yes. to go that direction. Yes, and so we're we're teaching them. This is what you do. And right. you actually told me the other day because I've taught all my kids. I used to read to them before they go to bed and, uh -huh. and all of that. So they all have reading in them, and they know that it's you know kind of good to do. If yeah, you some can of read. them hate reading. But, yeah, it, yeah. But, one of them hates it but right we're now. Sowing the seed of it mm -hmm. being something that's yeah. Well, uh -huh. um, our youngest was in the bed. Yeah, our youngest reading. he will read. <laughs> he, will, he will definitely read because he got four or five hours, <laughs> and he's the kind of kid that's like the other ones will sleep. They're like uh -huh. teenage girls. Yeah, they're, they're tired. Like, Why are you tired all the time? <laughs> but this dude is like he will not take a nap. Yeah. He high energy, so he uh -huh. gonna sit there and just read, which is actually a good thing. But um, I think that that might be the most detrimental mm -hmm. when you have a kid who has a cell phone in their bed or in their bedroom, and they are opening up themselves to the entire world. Yeah. You know. Uh -uh. Now I forget the statistic. I don't know if you know of what age on average kids are exposed to pornography or mm, pornographic it's, image. it's younger than what you think. It's real young. Yeah. I'm, uh, I think like 11. I'm not sure. I want to say 11. Uh-huh. But, I mean, if you, <coughs> you're giving them access to the World Wide Web and a closed door, no. Psh, psh, you might as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. might as well sign them up to see Well, I think, stuff. too, it... Um, having these rules really encourages family time. Um, so if they want to be on their phones, they can be on their phones until seven o'clock, you know, all, the, all they want to. They just, they're in the living room. They're sitting mm -hmm. on the couch. If you're on your phone, you're not in the bedroom isolated by yourself. Right. So we can all true. be in the same space, all five of us, and we're on yeah. our phones or do, watching TV and doing That's things. True. But That's we're true. together. We're together and basically it's centralized mm -hmm. and it's going to be hard to watch inappropriate stuff and mom is right here beside you. But then at 7 p.m., it's like what we call quiet time. Mm -hmm. And we've done that since they was little kids. Yep. But now they you're in bed by different. 730. By 7 o'clock, it's kind of like put the technology away. Let's now start preparing ourselves for bed. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another one. Um, something that we do um, with our kids and technology is that we don't allow our kids to watch PG-13 movies Ugh. until they are 13. You talk about that one. Let me talk about it. We have had, have we had arguments about this? <laughs> we have or had is it arguments been? about this one. And I believe they are to no avail. They should not have ever have happened. So here's the deal, people. Um, my parents raised me that way. 
I could not watch a PG-13 movie until I was 13. I hated it. All of my friends was going to the movies. I could never watch it. I, all these movies they would watch, I didn't watch until I was in my 20s because I wasn't able to watch them. Later on, I thanked them for it because I was not exposed to a certain level of profanity, promiscuity, a certain level of violence, a certain level of things that my soul did not see. So now, um, if it, it comes between me and you dealing with fear, mm -hmm. who's going to deal with fear mostly? Between me and you. Between me and you, me. 100% you. I mean, I can be just chilling in my own doggone house <laughs> and walk up to this woment. That is it. not fear. I'm talking about all the time. <gasps> Like all the time. I'm, I'm that like, is not baby, fear. Baby, it's just me. No, it is a level of fear. Baby, it's just me. We're in the house. Who do you, you think it is? Do you think it's Freddie? You just do you appear, think it's, though. No, 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 like, listen. you don't have do you think foot it's Chucky? sounds do you or think, footprints. Do you, think like, it's, do you think it's Jason? Who do you think this is in your house in the middle of the day? Of course, it's somebody in your family. <laughs> and then you got that, uh, that deep voice. But it's whose like, whose voice <gasps> do you think that it is? Here's the problem, people. Growing up, she had no parameters and she could do whatever and watch whatever mm -hmm. and so she watched horror movies and scary movies mm. i've watched 15 minutes of a horror movie in my life wow babe so it was the children of the corn and i was Ooh, with my cousins one. outside of washington dc and they were watching this and i said man i never watched a movie like this so i came <laughs> down and i looked at it for about 15 minutes and i said what in the world are these people thinking watching this crap and left and never watched anything else because fear is already a factor. Yeah. Why am I going to go pay to be in fear by Hollywood? And so, so for me, I always looked at the parameter of what movies you can and can't watch as a healthy thing and a great thing. And so thankful that I am not jumpy. I don't care about walking down a dark it alley. Is. I do not have that foundation. But not just a fear. Um, that piece. So the reason that we kind of get into it is because you don't have that same conviction. Yeah. Um, I don't, I kind of just, yes and no. I do have those convictions, but I have a slightly, um, I don't feel like, I agree with everything you said. I agree with everything you said, except on like the age part. So um, our youngest is 12 years old. If the movie says PG-13. Yeah, I don't agree with. It's 13. Uh, I, I, I hear what you said, but I don't agree with every PG-13. So, for example, superhero movies, Marvel, Avengers, Star Wars. That's a PG-13 movie. I get it, but I think that my 12-year-old can watch it. I think maybe my 11-year-old can watch it, depending on the child. Some movies that are rated PG-13 after I watch it, I feel like I can let my 12-year-old watch this movie. After you That's watch where it. I dis disagree. Yeah, because uh -huh. I'm going to judge it first. <clears throat> well, here's the deal. So in our home, my oldest two, they didn't watch a PG-13 movie until they were 13. Right. After being beat down for so many years this about outrageous. this principle, um, we decided to allow our 11-year-old, now he's a 12 years old, to watch certain movies with you. Yes. Just because I was tired of the fight, and I just felt like, if you want him to go ahead and watch it, go ahead and watch it. Uh, that's not true. I personally, no, I felt like you were almost like, well, everybody else is watching it, everybody else is doing it, and he can handle it. Me, I'm like, it don't matter if he don't watch it till he's 18 years old. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I would rather err on the side of safety and instead of the side, well, let let him do it because this is what he's asking to do. And all I'm mm -hmm. saying is for my listeners and watchers that everyone's going to have to make up their own yes. mind. And maybe it's not like a hard cut off, 11, 12, and 13. Yes. Maybe it's based upon the maturity of the kid, and I get it. But I just felt like, hey, it worked And it's well based for me. on the movie. I don't, th I don't agree that every PG-13 movie would be appropriate for my son's eyes. Um, but there are some, now I take each child individually. I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't and really argue the point with with the first two girls like they were like okay uh I don't know I'm just trying to pray and be discerning and mm -hmm. know what I can allow my son to do like while I sit there like he so he watches these PG-13 movies but I'm with him mm -hmm. he can't watch them just on his own sitting there whatever so I'm there with him to guide him through mm -hmm. and I just kind of just felt like no this is one we need to open up a little a little sooner um 
and I don't know. That's just the wisdom that that you have to use with each child. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would what love you're to do hear what everybody else thinks. You mm-hmm. can put in your comments below. Yeah. Some people probably think that PG thirteen is too much, and some people who maybe have allowed their kids to watch PG thirteen movies now later on is like, yeah, I wish I would have done yeah. that because they got exposed to this, that, and the other. Yeah. And I think that the responses in the comments are going to be completely amazing. Like we agree, like on ninety nine percent of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we're quick to agree. And honestly, we are still in agreement on this yeah. because I've agreed to go ahead and allow it to happen because mm-hmm. we did our, we did go back and forth with this so much that you say, hey, whatever you want, that's what I want. And I was like, well, whatever you want. And I think that that's how agreement yeah. should be. We can agree to kind of disagree, but still be in agreement. Mm-hmm. Like we're in agreement, even yeah. though we don't see eye to eye on this. And I think that lesson is so important for people in mm-hmm. relationships because we're two different people from two different backgrounds with two different relationships with God supposed to walk in one accord. And for 17 years, you just did what I said. Right. So I said, I don't want them to watch PG-13 movies, but you always was kind of like, well, what about this? Okay, then dropped it. And what about this? Okay, and dropped it. So you remain, we remain Absolutely. in agreement until I'm like, you know what, let's just do it your way and see what happens. Yeah. And so I think with our son, the one thing that you said that got me was like, it wasn't that you didn't want it. It's like there's there's a wiring in our son. He's more like the the movie director, um, movie producer into creativity, mm-hmm. how plots are. It's almost like he wants to do his own movies and his own. Mm-hmm. And so there's a portion of us that's like we don't want to nullify that. Sometimes when you parent and you hold back, then the kids go wild because you had too many limits. It's almost like, how can I take your gifting and steward it in a godly way? So it's like when it comes to music and when it comes to movies, yeah, he's that's his gifting. That's how he, exp- just like Hannah expresses herself through athletics, he expresses himself through the arts that way. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like, like you said, parental guidance. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's really what PG-13 is. Yeah. <laughs> it was never supposed to probably be a hard line. It's like, no, you need your parents with you in that. Yeah. And that's the stance that you've taken with that. Yeah. I want to move on to the next one because we haven't allowed our, okay, I already said that. We call out sin when we see it in shows and movies. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important because oh, yeah. we always do that. Yeah. Okay. So right now you can be watching a cartoon and you have a um, one little little male cartoon character get with another little male cartoon character. And we're quick to say, hey, the, um, the Bible says this when it comes to relationship that marriage is between a married man and a married woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's so important that I'm not waiting on the church to parent my kids. Come on. I'm not waiting on the school system to parent my kids. I'm not waiting on the coaches, the boys and girl clubs, or the mm-hmm. Girl Scouts to parent my kids. I'm going to parent my kids. And so when I see things that they're watching that is sin, um, it's not that I'm like trying to... Um, be narrow or judgmental or hateful, but I am pointing it out because I need them to know. Absolutely. This is being celebrated, but this is what God's word says. And it's like it's a consistent conversation. It's so much of a conversation, Listen, baby. They're probably like, okay, we know that. They do, I was getting ready to say that. <laughs> I will point it out and do a full-blown message, okay, right while the movie's going. And if I feel like I need to, I will put it on pause. It just de- it depends on the f- offense, okay? Right, Defen- right. I will. I have paused the movie before and say, look, we don't believe that. Yeah. Now, we love the the people they're amazing but i just want you to know that for we us for in Cletus. our house we serve the lord this is we what the bible the says we're to God's you word. know what i mean and i just share with them but now they're like oh we know mom and mm-hmm. they will quote back to me yeah. things yeah. but okay as long as you know yeah um but yeah it, but when honestly they, i even do that for myself like there's this exorcist movie the the pope's exorcist or something and for whatever reason i watch a lot of espn and they're killing this commercial and i'll grab my controller i'm a grown man mm-hmm. 1 a.m in the morning Pause. There you go. I'm not listening to that. Yep. I'm not letting that spirit in my ear. I'm not watching it. And so I don't watch things yeah. like that. And nor do I want my kids to watch those things. Yeah, it, it's good. And that's part of the 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 parameters that we we place from the beginning with right. our kids. It's just we just don't allow that stuff in our house. Right. Because we know you and I and how we're wired. I can see things. Right. I mean, God gives me visions and dreams, and it's one of a spiritual gifting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I cannot allow that gifting to be contaminated right. with all of the stuff yeah. <laughs> that we see on TV and yeah. that we hear, you what know, on the radio even. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about cell phones and kids, um, mm-hmm. what we do and why. Yep. And so now we have this thing called Bark, Bark. that we've, um, so our oldest, so this is what we, we did with cell phones, that now we have a, um, a rule where you cannot have a cell phone until what age? Like I don't a, like think a we all have internet a rule. access. 
Um, I think 16 is the rule. Is it 16? Where you have internet access, like Hannah, because when she turned 16, mm -hmm. she was able to drive, and you wanted her to have ways and GPS. Absolutely. So yes. we're like at 16, you yeah. get, um, you get internet access. Internet access. We do not allow our kids on social media until they're 18. Mm -hmm. No, not 18. Senior, senior year. year. Senior year of high school. Why? Because we want that senior year to feel so liberating that you don't have to go to college to like, oh, my God, I'm out of the house. Or by senior year, we're kind of giving you so much freedom with driving, with if you want to stay out a little bit longer, if you want to date, if you want to do things. I would rather you have that year to do it in our house while you're under our tutelage. But what I found out is when we had a senior in high school and she had access to social media and I was like, here, go ahead and download Instagram. Let me help she you set it up. She didn't care about it. Don't care anything. Don't post anything. For, for a long time, she had no photo on the front <laughs> of it. Just like the interest of it is yeah. not there. But she's so involved with student government, uh -huh. cross country, track and field, soccer, yeah. uh, the film team. She's yeah. making movies. And I'll be uh, happy to announce that she got a full scholarship to run cross country and track and field Amen. at Oral Roberts University starting Praise in the God. fall. Hallelujah. And so that's $43,000 blessing. <laughs> and uh, we know she's going to be a blessing to Amen. that program as well. Amen. But she's worked hard. She has. And she's been off of social media, but in it when it mm -hmm. comes to um, academics and athletics. Absolutely. And so that's been powerful. So yeah, we don't allow our kids on social media. Hannah <laughs> snuck and not snuck, but she downloaded Snapchat when she was 13, 14. And we was like, she ain't on it. We knew she wasn't on it very much. And I was like, whatever. But everything else, that's just been a thing until senior year. And so when it comes to phones that have internet access, it's 16 is really the thing. Mm -hmm. But now, but we want to be able to get in touch with our kids. So we gave them phones at 11. It didn't work out. We, we, we tried a flip back. phone. Um, and they couldn't text easily on it. It didn't really work out. Now they don't even make flip phones no more. But we have a solution for our audience. Mm -mm -mm. Tell them about it, babe. <laughs> well, we have. Well, let me say this first, <laughs> because we've given them um, iPads. Uh -huh. They got so aggressive with um, playing games and stuff like that. They would fight over the iPad. Uh -huh. They broke two iPads. Okay, fighting over it and slamming it on the ground. Yeah. Um, just crazy. They've done all kinds of things sneaking around technology. One of our kids, um, I was sleeping in the house. They snuck on my iPad and ordered candy from Amazon. Two, a three pound bag of chocolate candy bars were delivered to my house at like two o'clock in the morning, plus a two pound bag and of, did, gu and of gummy bears, Sour Patch out? Kids. I found out because my phone said ding, ding, and on my doorbell, I saw the Amazon person coming cameras. and delivering. Yeah, we have can't. At 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, and so then I went and rewrite, you know, like went and looked and at my cameras. And you heard the alarm being turned off. I, I, I heard it all, uh -huh. but I was sleeping and didn't pay attention. Uh -huh. When I realized what happened, I went back and I just got on my phone and I see my child coming out of their room, opening up at the door, took the, the bags morning, in their room. Yes. Ordered Amazon Eaten chocolate candy. candy and then hid the bag yeah. in their room. That's some innovation. Wasn't going to tell me about it. Uh -huh. Use my money. Like, how, how did you, yeah. you paid, you did all of that. No, I've seen this kid set up an account and start buying music from people in Pakistan. Mm. And then you get it. <laughs> I mean, we got story after story about how one of our I kids mean, can work technology. I'm, I'm telling we you. We just got so, stewarded. So when I know, so for me to give you a phone uh -huh. and then like place some type of parameters on it, there's no way. Yeah. You are smarter than me. Uh -huh. He's going to figure out a way. Oh, yeah. They're going to figure out a way around uh -huh. this. And so that's why this new phone that I got, the Bark phone. Talk about now, it. There were two phones. First, there was the Gab. And I think Gab Girl, is good for. Girl, tell us for, about the Bark. Okay. Come on. God, Gab dog. is for the younger all kids. <laughs> all right. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us so, about Gab then. You want to tell us about Gab? If you have younger kids that uh -huh. aren't teenagers, Gab Gab is better because it, it has no internet access. It's limited apps, things like that. Gab. So like 10 and under, I don't Gab. G-A-B-B, Gab. Gab. Okay. But if you have older kids and they want access to apps, the internet, um, like all kinds of things, you can get a Bark phone. Okay. Uh -huh. Just B-A-R-K. -A -A and Bark, this Bark phone has the technology already on the phone uh -huh. to where it will, I've gotten so many texts. If, if your kids are texting people, um, it will, it gives you red alerts like on bullying, uh -huh. suicide, uh -huh. 
um, if they depression, start to use that language, you'll rage. Get a notification. Yes, all of those languages. It red flags come up, and they give you notifications. Mm -hmm. I control everything on this phone, so they can't have the internet, but I shut the internet you mean, down. You control it off your phone, off of my phone. You yes, can control their phone. I by control your phone. their phones from my phone, <laughs> and it's so easy. Okay, uh -huh. I I shut down their phone the other day uh -huh. because they it's seven o'clock. They're supposed to put it on the base. I came down early in the morning, and both of them had their phones in the rooms with them. Mm -hmm. So I. I got on my phone. I said, shut down, mm -hmm. shut down. They couldn't use their phones mm -hmm. for that whole day until I decided to let them back on. Mm -hmm. But I said, OK, leave your take your phone in your room. You don't use it. So this phone doesn't have social media. It does. Uh -huh. It has social media, uh -huh. but you have to allow it. Okay. So it only so has what I allow. allow it if you yes. want it, but we ain't allowed. Yeah, that. but so we don't use it. So there are other like games uh -huh. and there's other uh, kind of social media apps that I allow them to have like um, some type of messaging and like WhatsApp. Like there's some things that it's kind of harmless, aren't as so. invasive yeah, right. as others. <laughs> and um, I allow them to have those things, but you just... Yes or no. But now the good news is, is that they can text us anytime. Yep. And they can call us anytime. And so can we with mm -hmm. them. So now when we pick them up from school, it's not like, well, I hope they show up here at 430. It's right. like, no, we can text, we can call. Yes. Now they don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, they do have Wi-Fi. They have Wi-Fi when they're in the house. They don't have it out and about. Yes, they do. They don't this have, Bark phone is great. They don't have cellular. Yes, they do. They have cellular access on their Bark phone. Uh -huh. So we can contact them anytime, anywhere. Uh -huh. Can they get on the Internet? They can if you allow it. But for our kids, we don't allow them to get on the Internet. So I shut off their Internet Because I asked Kenny yesterday, I said, can you get on the Internet on that? Because he was playing a game in the mm -hmm. back. And it seemed very similar to, like, uh -huh. playing with somebody else. He was like, no, I can't get on the Internet. Right. He can't because I won't allow. I've shut okay. it down from his phone. Okay. He can't get social media apps. Uh -huh. He can't do all of that because I have the control. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um. Do you have any recommendations for the parents that are struggling with technology and kids? Um, I would say definitely take it seriously uh -huh. and watch your kids yeah. and don't succumb to the pressure. Like, so what if your kid's mad at you? Right. Like, don't feel like you're the worst parent in the world if your kid doesn't have a phone yeah. or um, <laughs> if like, well, you know, all of my friends are playing the game. Well, OK, yeah. all your friends, you know what you're, you know. Uh -huh. I'm not their parent. Right. They, it's okay to be their parent. And I think we've done that and stood strong on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we always give our kids other things to do. Mm -hmm. Like there's more to life than just this phone or this kind of technology. And I think that's what parenting is. It's mm -hmm. like re, um, redirecting directing their attention. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you don't do this, that your friend gets to watch these movies. Mm -hmm. you know. And I've seen people let their three-year-old go into PG-13 movies. Like, I'd be in Black Panther, and they got the four-year-old there. To me, that's just not how I would parent. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to judge you, but I'm just saying that even parental guidance, I'm talking about that's pretty intense content for mm -hmm. a five-year-old soul. Well, the amount of violence yeah, and the yeah. emotional um, turmoil that they go through. So the fact that I hold it back, Mm -hmm. And I say, no, not right now. That's good parenting. But what I feel like as well, it's kind of like, um, but I want to give something else. Yeah. So whether it's a sport, whether it's quality time together, whether it's camps that they go to, I always try to redirect them to, yeah, you don't have this, but look what you do have. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's, that's solid. So Absolutely. we're out of time for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's segment as it relates to... Um, <laughs> kids and technology, man. We would love to hear your feedback and your comments and maybe even some things that you do for yourself yeah. that works for you. Um, of course, we release a new show every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time here in the United States. We would love for you to hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to get the content when it is hot off the press. Um, we do this whole thing because we want to bring value to you. We want to help you grow in love with God and also in love with the people that God has placed in your life. So we share with you our good, our bad, the stuff we even trying to figure out still. That's we want right. to talk about it all. So if you love being a part of our community, make sure that you like, share, comment, review, and uh, it will be a great blessing to us. Hey, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We will see you soon. Peace. Peace.